So, hello everyone. Um, I, um, I'm back uh, to my channel posting new videos uh, and um, I wanted to do a little update on spectrophotometry. Uh, I made a video a few years ago, actually four years ago. I cannot believe it's been this long. And um, this video was quite popular because I explained how to set up a calibration curve in order for you to be able to decide and guess, uh, estimate concentration based on uh, absorbance that you might have, that you might measure with uh, a spectrophotometer, right? Or any other means that you might have if you do this at home or whatever. Um, so I think um, if you look at this video, it's quite, I think it's quite straightforward. Um, but I wanted, I had a few questions on, on, on my, my site and, and one of the questions, and actually more than one question was about what do we do when we have a calibration curve, right? So when we have this, I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger here, and what do we do when we have a calibration curve that might look like that, where we have the absorbance right here at a certain um, um, wavelength, right? depending on what obviously what you're measuring and then we have a correlation with the concentration here and most of the time the coloration within certain limits will be linear right so you have uh, different points here and there and those points might not be completely aligned with that line but actually at least you can see a trend um, using mathematical tools for that the slope and all that and then you can, uh, to a certain point, you can make a measurement. And let's say that this measurement, uh, you measure an absorbance of x right here. And then when you look at x, and then you have your calibration curve, you can know uh, with quite a good certainty what the concentration is based on the absorbance that you have right there, right? Simple. Um, the, one of the questions that I had is, well, what do we do, or can we estimate um, a value when we're out of that that graph, right? When we're our value our values are higher, can we do this? Well, um, yeah, you can. But please keep in mind one thing, and that's probably the most important thing. And there's a very simple way to go around that problem. Um, what you need to keep in mind is that the range of measurement that you use with this concentration here um, is linear within that range. But it doesn't mean it's always linear. Eventually, because of the limitation of the instrumentation that you have, eventually you will have a graph that will look like this. It will look linear, and then there will be a concentration that you're going to hit somewhere. You don't know where that is, right? It depends on whatever you're measuring. Also, mostly, it depends on your, your instrument. And you will hit a spot where actually having this concentration or five times the concentration always gives you exactly the same values. It plateaus. And the problem is that most of the time you don't know where that is. You have no idea unless you test it yourself. But why would you do something like that, right? Why would you uh, go and spend time making that plateau? Unless this is an experiment that you something that you want to do. But most of the time, what we're interested in is having the absorbance and deciding what's a concentration, and that's it. And then we move on, we do our experiment, whatever we want to do with it. So how, how do we do this? How do we go around that problem? Well, it's very simple. If you have values that are, you know, right here, right? This, these are your values that you have your calibration curve with, right? What you need to do is, you, if you have an unknown that's actually higher than that, a value that's higher than what you measured here, what's important to do for you is actually, if you can, if it's possible, is to dilute that sample. And you will dilute a sample, take measurements, dilute more if it's always out. And you dilute until you hit somewhere around the middle of that, that area, right? Somewhere around here, mostly. Don't, don't select something that's at the delimitation, right? Don't, don't play with that. Don't tempt fit, right? Just go in the middle there. And once you know that, then what you do, it, always remember that what you, you diluted. Remember the dilution factor of that. So, for example, if you have a value of 0 0.01, right, when you measure it, it's diluted, but you diluted this 10 times, 
right? You had it say, you know, point 100 microliters in one mil, for example, and then to up to a mil, it's at least 10 times. Well, what you need to do now is to have that value, that's a value in, um, in concentration, absorbance concentration, and then what you need to do is multiply that value by 10, and then that gives you 0 0.1. That's the new value. That's the accurate value. That's the correct way to do this. Don't waste your time trying to guess what's here, not knowing if you already plateaued, un unless you test it by yourself, like I said. But you know what? The best way to do this, the most accurate way, is actually to dilute your sample. That's the most important part of it. The other question that I had, and I need to address this here, is that um, I'm, a, I'm telling you to dilute something, right? So, okay, you what do you dilute it with, right? Um, well, here's the problem. When you're measuring the absorbance of a sample, you're measuring that molecule, right? You're not, you, you, the absorbance of the molecule, you're not interested in the absorbance of the medium in which is this in what is dissolved, right? So if it's like water with some ions, sodium, chlorine, whatever you have in there, um, you, you need to know that this can interfere depending on what absorbance you measure, your measurements are being made, it could interfere with your measures. So always make sure that you have a blank and that blank is reflected over and over and over again so that when you, you add your, your sample and you di dilute it, make sure that this sample, that the new sample that you created because it's diluted, make sure you can blank it. Make sure you can remove all interference so that you're measuring only the molecule you're measuring. And that's very, very important, right? Otherwise, what's going to happen is that you're going to have different, um, you're going to have interferences and your value might not be right. It might you know, might be totally wrong and lead you to make one conclusion when actually you needed to come to that other conclusion here or, or whatever, right? And if it's for a report, you know, nobody likes to lose marks for no reason, right? So that's the important thing. Finally, um, you know, make sure that your sample is at the same temperature. So it might be tempting to, you know, use a buffer that you have in the fridge, for example, and you say, oh, I'm going to dilute my, my sample with that buffer. Well, you know, yeah, okay, great. You can you can um, you can blank it, and that's like an inter interference. You're all taken care of. The problem with temperature is that uh, if you're in a humid environment, you might have um, you might your uh, measurement your your um, tube or whatever you're measuring it. Um, you know, quartz. You know, little uh, sample tube might fog up or you might have bubbles in it and those bubbles might go right in front of that light path and if you do that well obviously you're measuring something else and that again this also can lead you to different conclusions right so um, I wanted to address those problems uh, hopefully that works for you and hopefully um, you know uh, you have very good success with your uh, measurement Okay, so until next time, see you. Bye.